Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Tim Cook is on his knees as Joseph Carlson has just sold some of his stake in Apple. Apple has moved into a category where I just, I, I just have a couple concerns and it's caused me to reduce my position again by around 14%. All jokes aside though, Apple is currently more of a punching bag than Jake Paul will be against Mike Tyson <laughs> in the news cycle. Not only did it cancel its development of the Apple car, but it also saw its market share drop massively in China recently and saw the EU force it to allow sideloading and different app stores on the iPhone. Joseph Carlson's not the only one selling though, as Warren Buffett also cut his stake in Apple by 1% last quarter, but there are still some analysts who are bullish on the company. Our next guest says that despite current weakness, Apple could be set for a monster turnaround when it unveils its first foundational AI model this summer. So today, let's go through the bad news and determine how bad it is for Apple and the bull case for the company as well. And I'll tell you whether I think the stock is a buy, a sell, or a hold at this valuation. Before we start for full transparency, I've been an Apple shareholder for around three years and 6.4% of my individual portfolio is in Apple stock. That's compared to around 5.6% of the S&P 500 being Apple. Let's start off by going through some of Joseph Carlson's concerns about Apple stock, starting with valuation. Apple trades at a relatively high valuation of a 27 Ford PE. Now, the fact that the company trades at a 27 Ford PE in and of itself is not really a concern. The issue is, is that a company needs to justify their price to earnings ratio. Now I have to agree with him here as the company does look quite expensive sitting at a 27 price to earnings ratio with only a 7% projected earnings per share growth forecast. The company hasn't always sat at such a high price to earnings ratio. It used to sit at around 15 for almost a decade. And that's actually when Warren Buffett first bought in. The company was assigned a higher price to earnings ratio by the market due to its expansion into the services business with a subscription model, think Apple TV, Apple Music or iCloud. It's a lot easier to expand the revenue and margins for these services than a hardware business like selling iPhones, MacBooks and so on. But that business is now under threat by regulation. Sideloading has arrived. If you don't know what that is, in the past, Apple has forced everyone to only be able to download apps through their Apple App Store. That App Store charged a 30% transaction fee on any payments within apps downloaded from that store. Now the EU has basically forced Apple to allow alternative app stores made by other companies to be downloaded on iPhones and people to be able to download apps completely bypassing Apple's payment systems and ecosystem entirely. Now a 30% fee might seem excessive and companies like Epic Games, the owner of Fortnite and Spotify have been complaining about it for years now. They've also taken Apple to court numerous times in an effort to get them to reduce it. But is a 30% fee really so different to the market standard? PlayStation Store charges around a 30% fee for developers to have their games listed there and Steam charges 30% to developers to have their games listed there. In fact, while Daniel Ek, the CEO of Spotify, complains so bitterly about Apple's App Store fees, he takes around 30% of the revenue of every single music track stream on his platform for his company himself. So there's a lot of hypocrisy here. Whether or not you agree with the politics behind the Apple Store changes and sideloading, sideloading is here, whether you like it or not. So how will this actually affect the Apple App Store? Has it effectively killed it off as a golden goose for Apple? In my opinion, it definitely won't. It's really difficult to get users to modify their behavior when they have a habit. And that's pretty much the reason why Google is still a massive powerhouse in spite of the rise of AI. And it's the same thing for the Apple App Store. Why would consumers change over to a less proven app store that doesn't have the same kind of reliability and security as the Apple one? In addition to that, will companies even bother to make their apps compatible with these alternative app stores as there are obviously large developer costs 
and the user bases of these other app stores are gonna be far, far smaller than the Apple one. So what would be the point of doing that? I think a bigger issue for investors is that in the EU at least, the Apple App Store has become a worse business model. Apple has had to reduce its fees from 30% to only 20% or 17% if an app decides to use an alternative payment processing system that's not via Apple. The final headwind that Apple is currently facing that Joseph Carlson mentions and I agree with is the DOJ lawsuit on Google. The DOJ is suing Google for being a monopoly and profiting off of being a monopoly specifically because of their default position on different devices. Google pays a lot of money to be these defaults, of course, and one of the biggest places that they send money to to be defaulted is Apple. The DOJ is basically suing Google for having anti-competitive practices and being a monopoly by it paying around $18 billion per year to Apple in order for Google to be the default search engine on Safari on iPhones. Were this deal to be struck down, I don't think that Apple could just turn around and ask Microsoft for the same amount of money to put Bing as the default on Safari. After all, wouldn't that just be the exact same level of anti-competitive? Surely it would make more sense that Apple would basically be forced to give users a choice of what search engine they wanted as a default on the first time they opened up Safari. That seems to make the most sense to me, and it's basically what Apple has been forced to do with regards to its default search browser on iPhones in the EU after recent regulation. If Apple was forced to do that kind of a business model, it would be an absolutely massive blow for the company because that $18 billion per year is pretty much pure cash for the company. And the company made around $100 billion per year last year in free cash flow, so it would be a nearly 20% hit to the company's cash flows. Now, it's not only the service and software business of Apple that is facing some big hits, it's also the iPhone. Recent reports suggested that iPhone sales in China dropped nearly 24% compared to the market in China dropping around 7% last year. In part, this was due to China's economy being so bad for consumers recently, and Apple as a premium option phone would obviously drop more in sales compared to more budget phone manufacturers in China. But more concerningly for the company was the rise of Huawei. Huawei was put on chip blacklists a few years ago, which prevented it from making a 5G phone. And now that it has actually produced its own 5G phone using domestically sourced chips, it was seen as a huge win for Huawei and China as a whole in the US-China trade war. And that saw a surge in nationalist buying intentions and lots of people bought Huawei's that's always been a giant risk for Apple as it has huge exposure in China in a way that many big tech companies don't because they're banned or they're just not very popular. With all of Apple's old business models stagnating or floundering, analysts and investors are looking for a new business model that can drive revenue and profit growth at the company. And it came as a shock then when the Apple car was announced to be dead. The company had spent around $10 billion over the last decade in an attempt to make an electric car that was on par with Tesla. With this dream dead, what are the Apple Bulls hoping for in order to reignite the stock price growth in the company? Well, it's personalized AI. So they've got 2.2 billion active devices. They have a history of having services, obviously everything from music to iCloud storage to Apple TV. And if they can, and on average, those are about $9 a month. And so if you just take uh, a, a, a product that's personalized AI, you take a personalized AI product, you sell it to 20% of that base for $10 a month, that's going to add over 15% to operating earnings. And I don't think, I think that's a, a very achievable piece. Gene Munster has been an Apple bull for an extremely long period of time. He was shocked by the Apple car cancellation, but he's since said that the transfer of staff from the Apple car project to personalized AI could be a potentially even bigger business model. I have to agree that if Apple could produce a high quality AI personal assistant that could help with tasks 
like automatically creating calendar items for you, replying to messages with brief answers, or even canceling automatic payments from apps or products that you no longer use, it would be an absolute hit. And Apple is one of the few companies that people actually trust with their personal information and might allow this kind of a product to exist for. But this is pie in the sky thinking as it could be years before this kind of a product is ready and that's to even say that it's possible in the first place. Now, the number of headwinds that Apple are facing are absolutely huge in comparison and it does make holding the company a bit of a stretch. I personally will probably hold my Apple stock for the future, but I am seriously considering trimming as well, as I don't see the headwinds clearing up anytime soon. Let me know what you guys think about Apple and its share price in the comments below, and give me a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time.